summer of 1943, the American fleet has stopped Japanese ability to go on offense, and the Russian army has stopped Germany's ability to go on offense. And now we, we enter into a phase of the war where we're essentially pushing the Axis powers out of the land they have already taken. America and Britain began a massive, round-the-clock, 24-7 bombing of German industry, stifling production and transportation in Germany. You see the number of bombs coming out of that, uh, uh, that uh, British bomber there. On February of 19, in February of 1945, we firebombed the German industrial city of Dresden, killing 135,000 civilians. Meanwhile, we are gathering the largest uh, uh, amphibious force uh, in the history of the world, 3 million troops and the largest gathering of naval vessels uh, in the history of the world, in preparation for what we call D-Day. D-Day refers to the long-awaited American, British, and Canadian, actually, invasion of France and the beginning of liberating France from German rule. Uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower is, of course, in charge of this. There you see Ike uh, preparing, and you see the beaches of Normandy that our soldiers are going to be landing on. Uh, we had been planning this operation for years, and, of course, our constant delays had by now significantly angered um, uh, Stalin. The D-Day invasion was uh, an extraordinarily intense day of fighting, particularly on Omaha Beach, uh, which was the most hotly contested of the beaches. Some of the beaches, there was very little resistance, and, and Allied forces were able to, to walk on without much combat. But on the morning of uh, June 6th of 1944, uh, Americans at Omaha would face the stiffest uh, resistance. As intense and horrific uh, as the invasion of D-Day was, one, uh, one of the guys who drove the transport boots, uh, boats excuse me, told his kids uh, later in his life, um, I'm not worried about dying and going to hell. I've already been there. Uh, it, it was so intense was, um, uh, was the fighting at D-Day. Uh, but it was a day, uh, and, and, and by the end of the day, the Americans controlled the beach and began to establish a beachhead and unload a massive amount of men and material uh, in, into, uh, into France. But unfortunately, the operation stalled there for about a month, and it won't be until Omar Bradley, one of America's generals, smashes through the German line at St. Lo, uh, which is just a little bit inland from, D from, from where we landed on D-Day, where we break through and get in uh, to greater pa uh, uh, France. By August 25th, which is uh, a little under three months after D-Day, uh, the Allies retake Paris. And by September 25th, we've liberated all of France and Belgium as well. Well, of course, it's much harder to fight during the winter than it is during the summer. And as we're in for the winter at the Rhine, uh, the river that marks the border of Germany. Hitler, desperate and terrified that the Russians will get to Germany before the Americans, the Americans at that point were seen as a much friendlier force to surrender to. If you surrendered to the Russians, you were likely to be thrown into a camp and starved to death or forced to work. If you surrendered to the Americans, uh, the, the, the idea went, you would be given a chocolate bar. So Hitler wants to hit the Americans hard and maybe possibly open up a, a port in the Baltic or just simply get the Americans to negotiate a separate peace with him. And so he takes all of his resources and he hits the Americans uh, uh, camped along the Rhine River. He pushes a bulge into the American line, as you can see on the map there. And so we call it the Battle of the Bulge because he's pushed our line back. The Americans uh, who, who fight to resist this um, will be trapped in the Ardennes Forest, uh, some of them are completely surrounded, particularly those at Bastogne, uh, who are 55 miles behind enemy lines. <laughs> but the Americans will hold. They will not allow the Germans to break through. And this is some of the most intense fighting in the war. It's fought during a brutal winter in the middle of a forest. It's very difficult. By January of 1945, we've managed to push the Germans back across the Rhine, but the Russians have also entered into Germany. And when the spring comes, Bradley is once again uh, finds himself, Omar Bradley, uh, uh, the general, finds himself at the Rhine trying to get across and into Germany to accelerate the end of the war. The Americans believe that the Germans have blown all the bridges along the Rhine River, and it's going to take weeks or maybe even months to construct a bridge that will get the U.S. Army across uh, and into Germany uh, proper. But amazingly, a, a courier who's driving along the Rhine on the west side of it where the Americans are will spot this bridge, the bridge at Remagen. The Germans had tried to blow it up, but the bridge turned out to be too well built, and it didn't fall. And so Bradley, Omar Bradley makes a decision to mass the American forces there and get as many of them as he can across the bridge before it collapses. 
And he does. He gets almost the entire American army across this bridge before, as you can see there on the bottom, it falls. 300,000 Germans are taken by Bradley's troops in, uh, in, in northern Germany in the Ruhr Valley. And then we engage in a race to Berlin with the Soviets. Uh, the Americans and the British coming from the west, the Soviets coming from the east. When it becomes clear that the Soviets will get there slightly before uh, uh, the, the, the Americans and the British, we decide to stop and let the, Stalins take, uh, let the Soviets take Berlin. And even by then, before the war is even really over, uh, by April of, uh, uh, 30th of 1945 when Berlin falls, it has become clear that now the new tension is going to be the Americans versus the Soviets. Hitler commits suicide when the, when the Soviets uh, invade. In May 8th of 1945, is declared to be Victory in Europe Day. And the war is over, at least in the European theater. And you see the incredible celebration. It's hard, it's hard for us to imagine today uh, any event like this that would lead to this sort of celebration, as did the end of the, the war in Europe. 